So today we are going to solve one more problem. I'll quickly introduce myself. I am Mamta. I am the co-founder and mentor at PrepBytes. So through these videos, we try to solve questions along with uh, students. So when I'm saying solve question along with students, make sure that you are solving question there. It's, you know, just don't go to see the video and just relax and see the videos. Solve the question along with the video. Pause the video, understand the question, understand the logic, and try to solve the question on your own. Even if, you know, even if you're stuck, then go on to see the video. So try and solve the question on your own. So the agenda is that you code and I just help here, okay? So I'm I've taken a pretty uh, basic question today. So the problem statement is, write a program to take a number as input from the user and print the remainder when the number is divided by 10. So the most important thing or the first and foremost thing when you're coding is to understand the problem statement. So here we have to understand the problem statement. So what is the problem statement saying? So let's try and read it once again. So the first half is saying, write a program to take a number as input from the user, right? So let's say I take N as an input from the user and user inputs 456, okay? And what we have to do is that we have to print the remainder when the number is divided by 10, okay? So forget about the code. Let's see, just, you know, let's just try to see that what happens when 456 is divided by 10, what is the remainder? So if we see that when 456 is divided by 10, we get, okay, write it here, divide 456 by 10. What do we get as quotient? We get 45 and we get remainder as six. Okay, so I'll tell you what many students do at this particular place. So what they do is they start putting points. So what they do is that if I divide 456 by 10, we get uh, 45.6. So this is not the case. So you have to keep on dividing only till you get an, you know, you're getting an integer. So this is not how you should do it. You should divide it only till you are getting an integer quotient. So here you are getting 45. You are getting the remainder as 6. That's it. You don't need to keep on dividing further, right? So not many of you might be having this problem, but many students face this problem, okay? So that's why I clarify this. Now, the question is, if I divide 456 by 10, I get the remainder as six, right? So how do we write program for this? So we have two operators. We'll talk about two operators. If you use C, C++, Java, this operator is, you know, these two operators are there everywhere. So the two operators that I'll talk about is division operator. We call this as division okay i'll remove this colon it might be confusing so the very first one is division operator which is this and then we have modulo operator oh i'm sorry then we have modulo operator so the agenda of this session is to tell you about the modulo operator only so if again I go back to that thing that when we divide 456 by 10, we get quotient as 45 and we get remainder as 6. So here n was 456, right? So if we write our program and we do something like that, 456 by 6, let's say I've written something like this, we get the output as 45. And if we do 456 mod, I'm so sorry, it will be 456 mod 10. And if I do 456 mod 10, I'll get the output as 6. So in order to get the remainder, I need to use the modulo operator. So the modulo operator gives you the remainder. So if you do anything like A mod B, it will give you the remainder when A is divided by B. So it could be anything. So if you, if you say you do something like 10 mod 3, so I won't give you the answer for this. I want you to come up with, uh, you know, your own that if we do something like 10 mod 3, what will be the quotient and what will be the remainder, right? So first try and come up, uh, you know, uh, do the calculation on your own. Do the simply simple division that we used, to, we used to do in maths that if we divide 10 by 3, what will be my quotient and what will be my remainder? So if we divide 10 by 3, my quotient will be, three and my remainder will be one right so if you do something like 10 by three 
you get output as 3 and 10 mod 3 gives you the output as 1 right so that was about the modulo operator and the answer to this a solution to this particular problem lies in the modulo operator itself so now let's go on to write the code so but before going on to write the code make sure you have understood the things till now if you haven't i suggest you to just go through the uh, you know whatever we saw till now again so now make sure you understand and then let's proceed further to write a code right okay so we'll write the code in all the languages i'll start with c so let's say i'll just write the main function so we have int main okay so what you have to do is first we have to take an in, uh, integer as an input from the user so first we need to declare an integer right so we have int n then i take the input from the user right now what we have to do is we have to divide the n by 10 and print what is the remainder so let's say i'll have one more variable to keep the remainder let's say i name it rem so i do something like rem is equal to n mod 10 and then i print this rem So this is how it goes. This is how you write a C program to find the remainder or print the remainder when number is divided by 10, right? So now let's go on to see the program in C++. So one thing you will notice is that the logic remains the same. You have to use the modular operator. It's just that the syntax of taking an input from the user and printing the output changes. So now let's write down the program in C++. So again, we'll declare the variables. Now we have to take the input from the user. We'll be using cn, right? We'll do remainder is equal to n mod 10. So see, if we directly have to print the output, we could have used this n mod 10 in the print statement only. But here we are taking it in another variable. You can do it either ways, right? So we have rem equal to n mod 10 and then we have the c out c out rem simple right so everything remains the same just the input and the output changes now let's write the program for java so i'll remove this maybe so for java we have public static void main We'll again take the variables. Now we have to take the input from the user. We will use the scanner. We will create a scanner object. Now I'll store the remainder in rem variable. And now I'll simply print the output. So this is how we write code to get the remainder. So make sure you understand the concept. So this is going to help you in lots of other questions. So whether we have to, uh, you know, print reverse of a digit, whether we have to find sum of digits, whether we have to find the last digit. So if you see, this is something that which is going to help you in lots of your questions. Okay. So that was all for today. Make sure you keep coding and keep practicing. Thank you. Bye.